Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Let us check out the latest information regarding ships and vehicles and their development. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for the support, it is truly appreciated. And if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. So let us kick off firstly with the Crusader C1 Spirit, which has reached the final art phase. And as we can see, the C1 is now in the 321.1 patch and will go on sale for the live release of that patch, which will be around the 17th of November for the IAE. Now for the RSI Polaris, it says the white box work increased on this ship as more artists were freed up from other projects, with the team focusing on the habitation areas at the front of the ship, working their way back to ensure that everything is set up and ready for design to make a pass, while its exterior white box is nearly finished with elements like turrets in progress. Now it is great to hear that resources are increasing, and as I have said in the past, it may currently take a year to get a large ship out of the door, but as resources increase, new hires come in and get trained up on the processes of building a vehicle, that time to deliver will decrease. And that means that we could see all of these large backlogged ships come along at a more timely rate. And with RSI specifically being a very well fleshed out manufacturer, getting new hires trained up on that brand to bring the Polaris, the Galaxy and the Perseus plus any other RSI ships is not as complex as working on ships like the Banu Merchantman. So here is hoping that as more and more resources come along, the speed at which ships like the Polaris can release at a much quicker rate. Anyway, the team also worked on changes to the Aegis Reclaimer to support structural salvage, including altering the claw and its interior salvage stations. Now this is going to be great to see expanding the salvaging profession to that next level, on top of hull scraping of course. Hopefully we can even see more material types make their way into the verse as well, offering a little bit more skill, experience and knowledge to knowing what materials on any ship are worth more or easier to get hold of, especially as they are now expanding on the economy as well. And if you didn't know, structural salvage was formerly known as munching and is applicable to both the Reclaimer and its claw, plus the Drake Vulture. Anyway, moving on, an all new ship reached final art, with the final reviews approaching soon. Now I'm not sure what this ship is, final art could mean that it will be straight to flyable, but we will talk further about potential ships spotted on this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo trailer later in the video. A new variant that was mentioned last month continued through Greybox, with all the vehicle components being added, and once these geometry changes have been completed, it will receive a damage pass. So this to me sounds like it could be the Cutter Expedition, as that would need a little bit of a shakeup inside due to its layout, and it should be coming along sometime soon, as they only revealed the Cutter Scout at this year's CitizenCon. The team also completed a pass on the Crusader A2 Hercules, adding relays for the resource network demo that we saw at CitizenCon, as well as creating the relay assets themselves. And it'll be nice when we start seeing this resource network system get implemented throughout all of the ships, and how this will impact our day-to-day -day in the verse, having to monitor, maintain, fix, or replace components and items as needed. Now, anyway, to the sneaky images that we saw on this year's IAE trailer, one being a potential Tumbrel Storm variant, the Storm being the solo light scout tank that we know is coming in Alpha 3 21.1, or maybe 21.2, I can't remember to be honest, uh, but one of the variants that has been discussed during the monthly reports could certainly be referring to this image, which looks like a potential AA variant or missile variant. There also appears to be something pointing to the Aegis Redeemer, another potential variant for this year, possibly, although it is a little too difficult to determine anything from this image as it just looks to show the Redeemer, so I won't delve into it too much, but there could be something happening with this ship. We also have a new Jian ship on the way. Sounds like it's going to be from Gatak, which could be the Siulin, which is intended to be a Xi'an starter ship, which was one of the previous CitizenCon voting ships. Now this Xi'an symbol translates as use or utilize, thank you to Jail for the translation as always, uh, and this could be a button, it could just be its name, or something else, I don't know. It was also mentioned a while ago by the ship teams on a Star Citizen episode, I think it was back in May, that the Gatak railing was going into production soon, alongside the 
G12 from Origin, the RSI Apollo and the Origin X1, which we have already seen or heard is actively on their way. So it could be either or, the Sulin or Raylin, or it could be both. I don't know. And finally, there is a lot of talk surrounding the RSI Arasta, which is a large mining ship from RSI that was voted for from last year's CitizenCon. Now, this ship sits between the Argo Mole and the RSI Orion, and it sounds like it can also refine its own ore. And as the work on functional ship refineries comes to a close this month, according to the progress tracker, it'll likely be a very useful ship. Will it be straight to flyable or concept? I would probably guess at it being a concept ship due to the lack of resources and the plan to firstly flesh out RSI more with the Polaris, but it could be straight to flyable. I really hope it is, but we will have to wait and see. Anyway, there you go. That was the latest information regarding all things ships and vehicles. The IAE is happening very soon, in which almost all ships go back on sale and are shown off to the public at the Tobin Expo Center at New Babbage on Microtech. Plus, many new ships will be revealed. Also, Star Citizen will be completely free to play from November 17th to the 30th. All you need to do is create an account, but do make sure you use a referral code so that you get some extra creds. So if you have a friend who has been nagging you to play, or you just know someone in general who's been playing, ask them for their referral code. By all means, use the one in the top left-hand corner of the video and linked in the description below to get yourself that extra 5K. Now, this will give you the opportunity to try Star Citizen completely free between those dates and make the decision whether there is enough enjoyment there for you to play during the alpha phase. But with that said, that is all I have for you today. Please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermagbrother. We will be checking out Pyro, hopefully for the full stream tomorrow. It is coming up to the last days of the Pyro system. Links are in the description below should you want to join me over at Twitch. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.